In this video, we're going to see if there's a difference between heating your honey or not heating your honey when making mead. So let's get started. So for this test today, we have the same mead recipe. I'm going to go ahead and show it to you right now. It is three quarters of a gallon of water, 2.5 pounds of clover honey, which is what I have here in these two containers. Um, we are going to be using the Lauvin QA23 yeast. I'll be using two grams of that. And then that's it. It's a traditional mead. So with that recipe, we are going to test the difference between heating your honey and not heating your honey. In some mead recipes you'll find, and older mead making techniques, lots of times people will heat their honey pre-mixing everything together. And this is to pasteurize the honey, make sure you kill any um, possible bacteria, and really just ensure that there's no po possibility of a bad fermentation. Now, there's kind of a contention because some people heat their honey, some people don't. And one thing I wanna test is to see if there's a taste difference between the two. So here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take uh, two and a half pounds of this honey right here, and I am going to low heat pasteurize it, which means I'm going to heat it up to 140 degrees for 20 minutes on my stove in this pot, and uh, that will again pasteurize it. The high heating, high pasteurization method is 150 uh, Fahrenheit at, for five minutes, but we're doing the low heat. So then I'll make my mead with the heated honey, with my recipe, and then I'm also going to make the mead normally without heating my honey with that same recipe. We're going to see if there's any taste difference. So let me go ahead and start heating this honey up, um, since that'll take a few minutes. Okay, so this is now, I got it up to 140 for 20 minutes. Now I didn't show that process, it's simple, I put it on my stove and then I had a thermometer, basically I just watched it heat up until 140, let it sit there, try to hold it there for 20 minutes, and then we're good. Right now it's really, I mean, it's definitely liquid before, but it's definitely um, more watery, I guess, thin, more thin, and um, that means it's gonna be easy to pour. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna mix the heated honey version while this is easier to pour. So let's take our water, I'll take my three quarters of a gallon of water, pour in my honey, um, and I'm going to mix it in here. By the way, everything has been sanitized. This is my sanitizing uh, solution. I sanitize everything before I do it, as should you. Let me go ahead and mix everything up, and then we'll mix in... I'll also mix up the regular version real fast. All right, you saw I just mixed all my ingredients. And I have the gravity reading for this one, which is the not heated version, because um, I can actually take the gravity reading. It is currently at 1.079, so almost 1.080. Um, the heated honey, a cautionary thing for you, when you heat your honey and you add it to your water, it heats up the water. I, c I can't just pitch my yeast into this one just yet, and that's namely because it's too hot and it will kill the yeast. I need it to get down to like closer to room temp, maybe about 85 Fahrenheit before I can do that. So then I'll pitch, or I'll just, um, you know, sprinkle my yeast in, essentially get my two grams, sprinkle it into both. I'm gonna do it at the same time to be as fair as possible. A couple pros to uh, tell you that I experienced already. So pros of heating your honey, um, it poured really easily, which was nice. It also um, mixed in super easily because it was already hot and then the water just, just worked out really well. When you do it at room temp, it's a little bit more difficult. Like the honey um, took a little longer to pour out of here. It took a little bit more mixing and uh, I think that's okay. You know, sometimes if you don't mix very well in the bottom of your bucket or whatever, you can end up with some honey, but I didn't in this case. I made sure to mix super well. So reminder, same recipe, everything. Uh, I will go ahead and tell you the original gravity for this one um, right now, right here, and I'm gonna take the gravity reading in a few minutes. But I am gonna have to wait a few minutes to let this cool down, and then I'm gonna pitch my yeast on top of these. I'm not gonna include that in the video, it's very simple. I'm literally just gonna sprinkle the yeast on top. We're gonna let this go through the primary fermentation, really simple, ferments all the way through. The sugars will uh, be gone by the end of this. The QA23 will eat through all of them. And then we'll let it age for a little bit and do a taste test. So here is after the primary. All right, our heated honey test is completed. 
both of these have been sitting for, this is now day 15. They finished, I believe they finished fermenting, and I'm gonna go ahead and check real fast uh, via some gravity readings, which will help me know. So let me go ahead and take my gravity readings and then we'll find out. All right, so both of them, interestingly enough, ended dry at one, or not even 1.0, 0.998. And uh, they they both started at the same gravity. This was, or not same, this was close. It was uh, 1.079 for the not heated honey. And for the heated honey, it was 0 0.078, yeah. Both ended up about 0.998. So obviously underneath 1.000, these are gonna be roughly then at, uh, whatever that is, about a math, 10 and a half percent, I think it's about right, ABV um, mead. So, great. I normally do a taste test at this point, but I'm not going to uh, because I'm gonna be part of the jury that sees if there's a difference between heated honey and not heated honey. I'm just gonna rack these over into a new container and then invite a friend over after these have aged for maybe another two weeks, three weeks, and we're gonna see if there's any taste difference between the two. We'll do a blind, well, a different kind of taste test where you can't really know what's what. So let me go ahead and rack these over. Both of these are done. Racked them over. We'll see if there's one uh, that might be clear. Who knows? One could be clearer than the other, but I don't know if that's true or not. So anyways, these will sit for a little bit. I was wrong about the dates, by the way. They started uh, 25 days ago. I somehow read it upside down, weird. So 25 days of sitting, now we sit for about two weeks and we do a taste test. So here we go. All right, here we are with the taste test. I have BC from Doing The Most here to help me. And uh, of course he has his own mead experience in his channel and um, he is someone I can go to for valuable tests like this. So. I was just explaining to him and I'll re-explain to you guys. Of course, the test is if heated honey has a different taste after fermentation than not heated honey. So on this side, we have the not heated honey version. This side is the heated honey. However, we are doing a different kind of test. We both have four glasses. Two of them are heated honey. Two of them are not heated honey. I've mixed them up. I don't know which is which. He definitely does not know which is which because he didn't even see me pour them. So I, and mine are all the same, so I can't even figure it out. But we're gonna taste test them, just kind of see if we find any difference between them. Um, and then ultimately, I think it'd be interesting to pick there are two favorites. Okay. And so, can you explain to me again? You put the honey in like a like a like a cook pot. Yes. Yeah, so I I did a mini Beauchamp experience, I guess. Okay. Um, some people will, like we were just talking about, will actually take and heat the honey in their must. Mm -hmm. We'll basically heat the must up. Um, I didn't do that. I heated the honey itself for 20 minutes at 140 degrees and then just poured it in my water. Got it. Yeah, I, I, I think I told you once, I went to a, like an old school mead, um, like a brew day mm -hmm. for, for a mead day. And the, the old school method that I had never seen before was to actually mix up your must over a burner mm -hmm. And I, I don't think they heat it. They definitely didn't boil it, but they would heat it up and like skim the solids off. Yeah. And so I was always curious, does that really, is what, what does that do? I, I, I definitely probably, if I do this again, well, I'll do that same, I'm curious. you know, yeah. idea. I don't, there was no Beauchang of the honey in my opinion. Okay. I maybe, I guess there could technically be a little bit of Beauchang since it is higher. So there could be some taste difference. Okay. Maybe we'll find out. I, yeah. But um, yeah. So we're gonna go and just start tasting, and then we'll kind of chat about it. So let's get started. Right. Pick your pick your poison. Pick your poison. <laughs> <laughs> they are very similar. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not getting anything super wild. One. Um, whatever this one is, maybe it's just because I the second drink is a little less in your face. Mm -hmm. um, it was a little less bitey, but. I mean, I'm really not getting a, a huge difference between There's, them. yeah, it's, no. Even with my possible boshing of the honey, <laughs> which yeah. could have been a thing. They all have a very similar body, very similar mouthfeel. There's a, there's a, a, a youth to them. 
like there's it's it's tastes like fresh mead uh-huh uh, there's a little bit of that that bitterness that you get from the you know the florals and the honey but nothing that jumps out really from any of these glasses that says i hey look at me i'm different yeah i'm definitely I, and a part of it like we i just said it could be that the um just having more drinks of it you get more used to that mm -hmm. burn but it, it doesn't burn too much it's just it has that youth. bite yeah, yeah that youthful bite that that fresh secondary i honestly i can't really differentiate enough between them to say one is better than the other because they're so close mm -hmm. i mean and I, uh, you, at this point, you don't want to like placebo your way and be like, well, right. this one tastes right. sweeter. <laughs> no. was, by the way, I forgot to mention, um, original gravity, one, uh, 1078, 1079. So about the same. Yeah. Obviously, you know, just it's hard to get the exact amount. But then uh, they both fermented actually dry to 0.998. So. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. dry. They're dry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't say that there's a, a big enough difference for me to put one above the other. So, this is hard. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to make a guess because I think that's okay. pretty entertaining. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna taste test and see if I can figure out. I'm gonna put my heated honey idea here, not heated honey here. I'm okay. I'm gonna put. So we're putting heated honey toward the middle. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yep. Heated, not on the outside. That's where I think I'm at. And I don't know what's in these glasses, but I'm going to, for the sake of argument, say that these were my favorites. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> hmm. It's it, the difference is. You're right. Like I'm trying to convince myself that I'm noticing differences, but mm -hmm. I, it, I don't. I can't really identify. I feel like these taste slightly sweeter. And I may be completely wrong yeah, exactly. at what's in these glasses, but my then that leads me to suspect that even a slight heating of the honey would lead to some kind of creation of non-fermentable sugars and therefore leave a residual mm -hmm. sweetness. But I could... Dude, this one's tough. Okay. This one's... I, uh, this yeah, I'm at the same point. Now, this is a crapshoot to say if we're right yeah. or wrong. But, okay, so let's say, let's guess, see if our heated, heated honey idea is right. I got one heated honey, right? Oh, I got <laughs> I got both my heated honeys. Yeah, so I I completely botched this. One. <laughs> They're like both not heated. Yeah. No, well, well there's flip. there's well no there's there's one of each. There's oh, okay. one of each here. Interesting. And so one yeah, of each there. So I I could not detect a difference. Uh, I think that was just luck because <laughs> I that I was just kind of like, is this close? I don't know. I, there's no discernible difference, but I do. I think your point of had I heated the honey more mm -hmm. and for a longer amount of time, there could have been some boshang creating, creating residual sweetness, which would then would have changed the character. I do wonder, now that we've talked about the heating mm -hmm. of the must, if there would be any difference within that. But I still don't think there would be. Because 140 degrees is not... I mean, I guess it's... I mean, it's the lower end of pasteurizing temperatures. Yeah. So I can't imagine that. You can do the high, high heat pasteurization, which is 150 for five minutes. Mm-hmm. And maybe that would affect it. I don't know. I don't think there's any uh, bad thing, bad, you know, choice behind heating your honey. But I also, I don't know. I don't see the reason you need to. It makes it more viscous. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, that is a thing. Like, uh, from time to time, I will microwave my back sweetening honey for, like, 30 to 45 seconds mm -hmm. just to loosen it up a little yeah. bit. Uh, but pre-fermentation... I I have not other than a boche, I have not nor can I see any benefit to mm -hmm. heating the honey. I think it does mix better. That's the one perk yeah. I can see from this. Yeah. Which I, even then you should be stirring your honey well. So right. maybe if you only have like a straw to stir your mead with, like and you can't shake it for Or if it's reason. like really crystallized or oh, yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. If you're crystallized if your honey's crystallized then for sure you have to be <laughs> heating it, it regardless. Something. But yeah. I, I mean I've been on the camp for a long time that heating your honey is like, like don't heat your honey ever. And I don't, I wanted to run this because I was like, what does it really matter? And in my opinion, I don't see a difference. If you do it at this point though, if you go past yeah. and heat for too long. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see any perceptible difference. I'd be curious 
what it looks like, like you said, heating it in the must, and then letting that go for a while. Letting it go mm -hmm. for a half an hour or 40 minutes and, and actually do scrape off any solids that, you know, come to the surface. Maybe that would have a difference, but man, here, nah. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to have some people that don't agree. <laughs> if you don't agree, that's okay. If you have uh, um, experience with this, I mean, think we would love to know because we're... It's a great opportunity for a comment. Yeah. yeah. We're as much in the mead science as you are. If you're watching this, you probably clicked on it for mead science. So um, let us know what you think. And I, I would be curious to... Um, I will probably will run that test in the future with some, yeah. some heated honey. I might do like a heated honey version with the in the pot and then a must heated version and see uh. if there's any difference do a three-way test or something. I don't know. But thanks for your help, BC. Of course. It's That's... always nice to come over and drink a Yeah, meat. free mead. So <laughs> um, if you want to, of course, support BC, go check him out on do, uh, Doing the Most, which they do a lot of mead and really cool, also mead science -y content, which is fun. And they also just make a lot of crazy meads and normal meads. So their channel is really nice. Um, and of course, you can do all the things for this channel. But go check him out. And um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day, and cheers. Happy brewing. I don't know which one I choose. <laughs> I don't think it matters. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Mix them together.